good grief. We're looking at a JoJo game. Now, this is the part of the intro where I tell you what JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is, how popular it is, and the impact it had on the internet. But if you're watching this video, you already freaking know. You don't need me to tell you. If you do, well, you're going to be lost as a goose this whole ass video, son. Now, a group of friends I hang out with started watching JoJo in a SciTube group, and only after one episode, I was hooked. The series lives up to the name, and I love everything about it. Even the English dub of the anime isn't that bad. I watched all of Part 3 in English and really loved Matt Mercer's take on Jotaro. Now, I knew there were JoJo videos games, but most of them are fighting games, which aren't something I'm really into. I've got such bad short-term memory that I can't remember a bunch of button combinations, and I've got such bad short-term memory that I can't remember a bunch of button combinations. Quarter circle flick the stick alley-oop ACDC EFG screw that. So to me, it looked like there wouldn't be a JoJo game that would appeal to me. Like a platformer, an action RPG, something I could play. Even better if it was a retro game of some kind. And then I found out about the Super Famicom game. It's a JRPG. Okay, I can jive with that. And it's based on part three, my favorite part. I could already imagine it. Having all kinds of stand powers you can choose from in some turn-based combat, fighting all the classic characters, and then it all builds up to one big epic fight with Dio. Whoo, boy, I was ready to try this game. And I did. And did it do all that stuff? Well... Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I recorded this in the wrong aspect ratio. There we go. All better. Now, this is not a joke. This is what the game looks like. And I know what you're thinking. Surely it doesn't look like this the whole game. Yes, the whole game looks like this. You get one itty bitty little play field and data on each side. It's like playing a game in a Viewmaster. Remember them things? Well, as you can see, the intro of the game starts out at the start of part three, as it should. Joseph's trying to get Jotaro out of jail. Jotaro is like, fuck you. And Avdol is like, no, fuck you. Well, what's this outfit they got Avdol wearing? And why does he have green hair? And so next, the game takes us to an automated battle where we just sit back and watch and we get to see what the battle system looks like. Before you start a battle, you get to draw a card and it either gives you a buff or a nerf. And for some reason, Dio is just kind of hanging out. Hey, you want to hear what Aura Aura sounds like in this game? <laughs> <laughs> That's not Aura Aura, what is that? So Jotaro finally comes out of the jail cell. Joseph then explains to Jotaro why he came all the way up there to see him and why him and Jotaro all possess a stand. And it of course has to do with the resurrection of Dio and that it's the Joestar family's destiny to fight him. What is this sprite of Dio? It looks ridiculous. And now it's time to start the game proper. But before we do that, there's one thing I've got to do. We need to go ahead and get this out of the way because people will bring this up that I didn't do it if I don't. Let's get the meme out of the way. Happy? Okay. So you got a little bit of limited movement. You got left and right, up and down. And you've got this point and click thing where you can click on stuff and see if there's any items there. Most of the time there's not really. Not even in places you would think there would be items in like this cabinet. Now when the game first starts off, it stays pretty faithful to the source material. There's the possessed nurse, the fight with Kakuin, and there's even an animation for when you pull out Kakuin's flesh bud that Dio used to control him. Don't move Kakuin. If I fail, your brain is toast. Woo! And there you are. So this is a good time to talk about the battle system and what I consider to be such wasted potential. You would think as a JRPG, you would have a standard attack, like maybe Star Platinum throws a single punch, and then you would have stand powers that cost magic points so you can do classic attacks like Starfinger and Aura Aura. Well, that's how the battle system should have been. Here's what they've given you. They gave you two attacks, just two and they do random amounts of damage. I'm guessing there's a critical hit system in play, but I never found an English version of the manual. You have a basic attack that lowers hit points, and you have a talk attack. You can trash talk your opponent to death, and that lowers their magic point. Now, you would think that magic points would be how you do special attacks in this game, right? No. You want to know what magic points do? It's the same thing as health. That's right, you have two types of health, and if either one goes to zero, you die. So so you've got one attack for HP, one attack for MP. What a stupid setup. It's like the developers had never seen a Final Fantasy game before. And then you have check. Let's talk about check. Some enemies will steadily dodge you every single hit or take little to no damage at all if you hit them. When that happens, you need to hit check. And you have a 50-50 shot of your character coming up with an idea. And on your next turn, you choose a tactic 
in this case, the idea. And if your character is the one that knows how to defeat the enemy, an event will happen and they will hurt the enemy or even outright kill them. But notice I said if your character is the one that knows how to defeat the enemy. Only one of your party members knows how to defeat the enemy. And to find out, you have to have every one of them check. Hope they have an idea, which sometimes they won't, and you'll have to try to check again. Yeah, sometimes things that don't work in this game will work if you do it again. I can't name one off the top of my head, but it's happened. But anyway, you make them check again, hope they get an idea, then on the next turn, pick the idea and hope to God one of them triggers the event. Did I mention a check counts as a turn? So the whole time this is happening, your enemy isn't taking any hits and is getting a bunch of free hits on you. Plus, I still don't know how this works, but for some reason, the enemy gets multiple turns and can hit whoever they want twice if they want to. Maybe that was a way to balance out the fact you have up to six characters? I don't know, but it sucks. The battle system just plain sucks sucks in this game and it's totally unfair. I guess a bizarre adventure needed a bizarre battle system. And I know what you're saying, oh Stu, you're just saying that because you lost a bunch of times. Oh, uh, actually, I barely ever lost a battle in this game. The first half of this game is kind of easy after you figured the game out. I finally did die and oh boy, did I after that, but we'll get to that. Now that I've taught you about the battle system, let's talk about the story. Now, if you've watched or read part three, you're gonna notice a lot of stuff. Stuff that's really wrong. In order to make this into a more streamlined game, I guess, there's only three locations in the whole game. Japan, India, and Cairo, Egypt. So they had to rewrite a metric fuck ton of the story to make all that work. But believe it or not, almost every stand user in part three is represented. You just meet them in completely different ways. Let me show you. Remember Tower of Grey, the bug stand the Crusaders fought on the airplane? Now you fight him at Jotaro's school, and his stand user is the school janitor. How about about when you first meet Polderef? We all remember he was at the restaurant in Hong Kong. Well, now he works at a bookstore in Japan and he's blonde. We've got blonde Polderef. What the hell, dude? I guess he has aluminum chariot in this game. Remember the captain the Crusaders fought on the ship and his stand deep blue moon that was powerful in water? Well, you're not gonna believe how they handled him. There's this building you go in for no other reason than to fight stand users, and there's one particular room in the building that suddenly fills up with water, and that's the excuse they came up with to add the captain. Also, in this same building, you get to fight the monkey. And after you fight the monkey, you find a random TV inside this building that Joseph latches onto, and Dio pops out of it and tells the gang to come to India. Yup, that's how that happened. In the game, at least. The airplane scene is in the game, though, but it's very different. The gang falls asleep, so they get sucked into the dream world of Death 13. And when you fight him, you can't use your stands. You have to use the idea function so Kakuin will yell to Jotaro to, quote, hit all of us. And somehow, that makes your stands work again. But after you defeat Death 13, the fun's not over on the airplane, because after a quick piss in the bathroom, yes, you can take a piss in this game, and it actually gives you a stat boost of some kind. Then you fight the High Priestess. No real strategy to her, you just keep attacking her till she's dead. And after you beat her, Joseph, with his infinite wisdom of airplanes, flies the plane to safety. Yay! But yeah, the story is all over the place and all out of order, so if you're looking for an accurate representation of part three, this game ain't it. Now let's talk about some of the quirks of the game. The game tells you that there's a time limit. You have 50 days to defeat Dio or Holly will die. The days pass by as you travel from location to location. Progress through the story or rest at the Speedwagon Foundation, which is there to restore your health and save your game. But here's the thing, the game kind of lies to you. Once you get to the 50th day, time actually doesn't progress anymore, and the only thing that's different is you can't rest at the Foundation anymore. So technically, you don't actually have a time limit. Then there's the stats. If I was able to find an English version of the manual, I'd be able to tell you what some of these things do. But I have no idea. However, you can buy skill books that increase your stats. 
stats. But since I don't know what they do, I don't know what to buff, and the game doesn't tell you what they do. Then there's the movement. Now you think you wouldn't get lost in such a small play area, but it's possible, and it happens almost at the start of the game. Now you can go through doors or alleyways by pressing up, that makes sense, but what the game doesn't tell you is there's certain areas you need to get to by pressing down, and it alerts you of this with a small white arrow that is really easy to overlook. I passed by an area I can go to numerous times without seeing the arrow. They should have made the arrow a little bigger, maybe put some text on it, something. Like some big text that says, go here you dumb fuck. Then there's the weapons and armor you can buy at the shop for everybody, and it's one of those games where a certain item only works on a certain person, and they don't tell you who it works on. You have to trial and error through the menus until you can pick it, selecting each character. It's really clunky. Now for some more story inaccuracies. Remember how Polnareff storms off to find the man with two right hands? Him and Avdol get in a fight, and Whole Horse shoots Avdol? Yeah, none of that happens. The whole gang fights Whole Horse and the mirror stand, realize they can't win, and run away. Then Polnareff is like, yo, sorry everybody, my bad for running off, we cool now. Then they fight Jay Guile in the desert and get a treasure key from him. Use the key to open a treasure chest which has a letter from Dio. Nothing really important, it's just Dio going, I'll get you Joseph Joestar next time. <laughs> you find Darby in a bar and you play a card game with him. And it's the simplest card game in the world, you just need to get a higher number than Darby. You can actually win against him and he takes it very well. And he tells you where to go next. You don't fight him, he doesn't take your soul or nothing. Darby's a pretty nice guy in this game. Then you run around in this mansion where you fight Enyaba, and after you defeat her, she tells you that the lover's stand is inside Joseph's head, and at that point, Joseph says the line. Oh my god! Well, after you defeat it, you decide to go back and look for Whole Horse. So they go back to the mansion where they fought Enyaba, but instead of finding Whole Horse, they find Cameo and he fights you with his zombie clones. And you actually have to fight him three times for each wish that he grants. Then they find Cameo's stand user and he tells him that Whole Horse went to Egypt. Now you know as well as I do, this is not how they find Cameo's stand user, but I don't think what they did to him in the show could be put in a Super Nintendo game. If they did, that would have been fucking amazing. So Jotaro gets a camel and heads towards Egypt, but they notice the sun is really fucking hot and if you check the sun, you get to fight it. You are actually actually fighting the actual fucking sun. Then you find the sun stand user, I can't believe I'm saying that, and he gives you some money and says he was hired to find a dog, which of course is Iggy. Well, it turns out Iggy is hiding out in a temple, and while you're in there, you find Anubis's sword. Yeah, hopefully that won't become a problem later. And then you fight Iggy, who is pissed you found his hideout, and after some good old-fashioned animal abuse, Iggy becomes your friend. The gang's all here, boys. Then the Anubis sword gets stolen, it takes over some guy, you fight him and somebody else. You meet Zenyatta and Mandata would steal all your shit. Alessi turns everyone into kids. The less said about Alessi, the better. You get your shit back. Iggy runs off into the desert where he finds Endure. You fight him, then you make it to Cairo. Mariah magnetizes you. You follow her into a building where you fight her and Whole Horse. You find another TV and Dio tells you it's time to enter his mansion and fight him. But first, you gotta get past Pet Shop. And Pet Shop is one of the biggest badasses in the game. The game has been easy up to this point, but now Pet Shop is gonna skill check your ass. He does major amounts of damage to your team, and you'll steadily be having to heal to make up for it. It's a long, grueling battle, but eventually the bird will flip. At this point, this is where the difficulty bumps up a lot. The game is done fucking around. From here on, everyone you fight is gonna be a lot harder. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, I can just farm experience by doing a bunch of random encounters, right? There are no random encounters in this game. There's a set amount of enemies and once you beat them, that's all there is. That means you can't grind for experience points and make yourself stronger. You just have to do it. Anyway, you fight Darby's brother, then you fight Vanilla Ice. And the whole gang fights him at once and defeats him. Are you noticing something that's very wrong here? Something that's supposed to happen that hasn't happened yet? The entire team beat Vanilla Ice without anybody sustaining any major injuries of any kind. Yeah, that's what happened, right? Well, after you've beaten Vanilla Ice, you know what? time it is, it's Dio time, baby! Check out how they handled his time-stopping ability. Am I here? Or here? Or here? And now it's time to fight Dio, baby! And holy shit, they gave him a badass theme song! You gotta hear this! It's 
that theme song. That's been stuck in my head ever since I started doing this review. Hey, you want to hear what Muda Muda sounds like? Muda, 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 Muda. <laughs> anyway, the first time you fight him is scripted so you run away. Iggy finds a key to a strong box, and in that strong box is an item that'll make it to where Jotaro is very strong against Dio. So now at least Jotaro can fight Dio, but everybody else can't do shit to him. This fight is freaking impossible. I've seen people do it, but I genuinely think it's all up to luck and how many times your characters can randomly dodge his attacks. Because Dio attacks your character so many times and he has enough power to one hit or two hit kill every single one of your characters so you're steadily having to revive your party and do your best to keep Jotaro alive because he's the only one that can do any damage. This fight is so damn unfair. But you know what? It kind of fits the theme. Dio would be extremely overpowered. He would fight dirty and he does have the power to kill anyone in one hit. They actually did an accurate representation of if you really tried to fight Dio. A little too accurate. I honestly think if you win this fight, it was luck. According to walkthroughs I've found, he has a thousand HP, and each of Jotaro's punches does an average of 50 to 57 HP. So I would have to hit him an average of 20 times in order to take him down. And between my amount of health and revive items I have in my inventory, and the HP my party has, I can't keep my party alive long enough to make that happen. I kinda wonder if I've gotten this game in an unwinnable state. Like, because I didn't upgrade the stats of the characters with the skill books, because I didn't know what I was upgrading, and I used all my money to buy the health items, so I can't buy any skill books. I tried, oh boy, did I try, over and over again. But at this point, I have to admit defeat. I cannot for the life of me defeat Dio. Maybe if I had Darby's brother's stand that was really good at video games, I could beat him. But no. Because I'm out of time and out of ideas, we're gonna look up the rest of the game on YouTube, see if the ending of the game is actually worth all this headache. So Dio is defeated, the ground shakes a little bit, Dio and his ridiculous shoes lay down outside, the sun comes up, and his body disintegrates. And then the gang all go back home. Joseph, Jotaro, Avdol, Kakuin, Polnareff, and Iggy. <laughs> the stand fucks off from Holly, and the credits roll. Whoo, boy. What a strange game. It's like the devs had no idea how an RPG works. This game, man, I swear, it really upset me. There was so much potential here. I just, I like the idea of a JoJo RPG, but every idea that was executed in this game was executed so wrong. And you know, I don't mind that the story was inaccurate to the real thing. I expect that out of a video game, but this whole thing could have been so much better. The whole thing of having this small ass play window, the fact that there's no random encounters so you can't grind, and the battle system is just a fucking mess. I can't recommend this this game. It upsets me at so many levels. And I was really hoping this game would be good because the other JoJo games are all fighting games and I'm not good at fighting games. So I hope that this would be a game for me. But no, it's not. This game has displeased me and I will never play it again. I feel like Joseph should have shoved Hermit Purple up the dev team's ass. Let's talk about the dev team. Who made this? Apparently it was a company called Winkysoft and all their games only ended up on the Japanese market. None of them came to the US. Well, that doesn't give me anything to go by. Anyway, that's JoJo on the SNES. If you want a good JoJo game, play All-Star Battle. Don't play this. Me, I'm still gonna be holding out for when they make an actual good JoJo RPG, or maybe a platformer, an action RPG, a hack and slash, something like that. Until then, I'm just gonna enjoy the anime. The English dub. Because I'm evil. Like Dio. And that's it for this one. If you like what you saw, consider becoming a patron. $5 will make you see the videos before anybody else does. And you also get a Discord and your name on the board. You can get your name on the board for just $1. Subscribing and the bell shit doesn't hurt either. But I can't make you do it. I'm not your daddy. Until next time, everybody. My name's Stuart K. Riley. This is Working Man Games, and I am out of here.